melting. Is it true that roads in Yellowstone National Park are melting? Kind of is in some places, but it's nothing new and it's not due to volcanic activity. We'll cover that in this month's update from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Well, this is Firehole Lake Drive, and if you've been on this road, you know it's a bit of a bumpy ride. This is where a lot of the melting roads of Yellowstone stories originate from. We're in the Lower Geyser Basin, which is one of the largest and hottest basins in all of Yellowstone National Park. So a lot of this road has to pass boiling ground, and that's just not a good thing for asphalt. As it gets heated from below, it'll start to flow like silly putty, and it's especially bad on hot summer days when the sun's beating down on it from above. That really causes the asphalt to fail and deform. And when cars drive over it, it gets ripply and potholed. It's really not a good combination. Does it mean the volcano is heating up? No. This has been going on in this area for decades. It's a consequence of hot ground interacting with these asphalt roads. It's an incredible engineering challenge. So not a sign of a volcanic eruption, but certainly just a consequence of all of that hot water moving around just beneath the surface. So that's the story of the melting roads. Now let's talk about geyser activity, seismicity, and ground deformation that occurred over the past month. The quiet start to 2025 continued in the Yellowstone area, at least based on seismic activity. The University of Utah located just 42 events during the month of February. There were two swarms, one from February 1st to the 8th of about 18 events that were between Norris Geyser Basin and Mammoth Hot Springs. And then on February 11th, just south of West Thumb, there were 11 seismic events. The largest earthquake of the month, a magnitude 2.6 on February 11th, located to the south of Yellowstone Lake. So background seismic activity continues for the Yellowstone region. Turning now to ground deformation, this is vertical deformation at a GPS site near Lake. Now that's on the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. Each one of these blue dots is one day of data. The whole plot spans two years. Downward trends are subsidence and upward trends are uplift. We've seen an overall trend of subsidence since about 2015, happening two to three centimeters a year, an inch a year, and that has continued to the present. It's interrupted in the summer months by these little seasonal uplifts that are caused by changes in groundwater conditions, but you can see since the end of summer 2024, that subsidence has continued to the present day. And now finally looking at the tallest geyser in the world, Steamboat Geyser. This is temperature measured in the geyser's outflow channel for the month of February. It started off with a lot of minor activity, warmer temperatures, and then we had the first major eruption of 2025. Happened just before midnight on February 3rd, and after that, the temperatures dropped back down to very, very low levels. Pretty cold in Yellowstone this time of year. Unfortunately, we lost contact with the logger in mid-February. We're trying to reestablish that. But if patterns, as we've seen over the last several years, continue, minor activity is probably starting to pick up again in preparation for the next major eruption of Steamboat. Well, that does it for the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory's monthly update. If you enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe down below. And if you have any questions at all, leave us a comment or send us an email. Our address is YVOWebteam, it's all one word, at usgs.gov. Stay safe, stay healthy, don't melt, and we will see you next month. Bye-bye. Yeah, quite on the set.